Today, you're connected more than ever. Your friends, your family, your life. Having a partner that understands banking is what you do on your time, anywhere you like. It's about being connected. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning, Northeast Mississippi. This is News Break for Tuesday, February 7th. I'm Brad Locke. Thanks for joining us. You can catch News Break every weekday at 7 a.m. You can watch it at djournal.com, Facebook, YouTube, or the Daily Journal mobile apps for Apple and Android devices. I'm going to take a quick look at news, sports, and weather. Let's start with the weather underground forecast. For today, thunderstorms very likely. A high of 70 degrees, low of 56. The chance of rain is 90%. The three-day outlook on Wednesday going have some fog early on then mostly cloudy the rest of the day a high of 72 low of 38 got a 20 percent chance of rain thursday partly cloudy with a high of 50 low of 30 10 percent chance of rain and then friday looking very nice with clear skies a high of 62 a low of 51 and a zero percent chance of rain let's take a look now at some of the top stories from the daily journal and djournal.com on this Tuesday. The Lee County Board of Supervisors has assembled a team to begin scouting possible locations for a new jail facility. The group includes District 2 Supervisor Mike Smith, Lee County Sheriff Jim Johnson, Randy Hathcock of ESI Engineering, and Tim Weston of Jesco Construction. The group will identify possible properties where a new jail could be located. Board of Supervisors President Phil Morgan estimated the facility would require about 20 to 25 acres. Once possible properties are identified, Lee County leaders will be able to better estimate construction costs. Supervisors plan to ask voters to approve bond debt to fund the construction. That vote would likely happen alongside federal races set for next year. The current plan is for a 202-bed jail, as well as a dedicated morgue and office space for the Sheriff's Department. A new Justice Court facility may also be included. Two local educators soon will fly high into the Earth's atmosphere. Itawamba Community College astronomer instructor Bob Swanson and Guntown Middle School science teacher Connie Gusmus were chosen last year as 2016 Airborne Astronomy Ambassadors. They will get to fly on a NASA research aircraft beginning on March the 6th. The Airborne Astronomy Ambassadors program is a professional development opportunity for educators designed to improve teaching methods and inspire students. It takes 11 pairs of educators from across the country and sends them into the sky on a modified Boeing 747 to study infrared waves entering the atmosphere. Swanson and Gusmus will fly on two missions over the course of two days. They are experimenting with ways to share the experience with their students through a live video stream. Since, since being selected last spring, each of them have taken a comprehensive online astronomy course to prepare for the flight. Mississippi's new Adjutant General said the National Guard has changed in the time since he joined it in the 1980s. Jansen Durr Boyles was the guest speaker on Monday at the Mississippi State University Stennis Institute of Government Capital Press Corps luncheon. He said when he enlisted in the Guard, he was doing so to earn money to help pay for his schooling at Mississippi State. At the time, there was little talk of National Guard members being deployed to war zones to serve shoulder to shoulder with active duty soldiers. Boyle said people joining the National Guard today know they might be going to places like Iraq or Afghanistan, and yet they still agree to serve. The Jackson resident was appointed last summer by Governor Phil Bryant to replace the outgoing Augustus Leon Collins of Boonville as the state's top military commander. He will undergo Senate confirmation later in this session of the Mississippi Legislature. As Adjutant General, Boyles is in command of the more than 12,000 primary part-time members of the National Guard and the Air National Guard. Boyle said much of what the National Guard does is not performed overseas. For instance, two weeks ago, members of the Guard responded after tornado damage in the Hattiesburg area and they provided assistance at the presidential inauguration. And in sports, Mississippi State is back up to number four in the latest Associated Press women's basketball poll. The Bulldogs moved up one spot after a pair of wins over Auburn and Missouri. Previous number four, South Carolina, lost to Tennessee last week and fell two spots to number six. South Carolina handed MSU its only loss of the season on January 23rd, a loss that dropped the Bulldogs from number four to number five in the country. The Gamecocks still lead in the SEC standings with a 10-1 record, a half game ahead of Mississippi State, which returns to action Thursday against Vanderbilt. 
In Sunday's 70-53 win against Missouri, MSU was led by Dominique Dillingham, who scored a career-high 24 points. Undefeated UConn remained number one in the AP poll, followed by Baylor and Maryland. Florida State moved up to number five. And that's it for News Break on this Tuesday. We do want to remind you to check out a webcast we produce here at the Daily Journal. Capital View with Capital Bureau Chief Bobby Harrison and myself coming to you every Monday about 2 p.m. You can watch it live at djournal.com or catch the replay later in the day. And on yesterday's episode, we talked about the possibility of a state lottery. Also, we had an update on Ed Bill, and also we talked about the internet tax. All the stories I talked about today you can find in your daily journal and at djournal.com. We're on Twitter at djournalnow. Give our Facebook page a like as well. That's it for this Tuesday. I'm Brad Locke. We'll see you next time.